Hey everyone, Tomias here. Welcome to another Princess Connect video. So, um, finally, I'm here with the Ilya videos, and uh, I wanted to break this series down into about four or potentially five videos, just going over a lot of the uh, in-depth topics surrounding Ilya. And I feel that if I were to do a single video, it would probably take me anywhere between 40 to 60 minutes. Um, so I'm going to break it down and try to make it a bit more concise and release um, a video every day so that by the time Ilya hits on the 28th, you would have uh, ample information to make your decision on whether or not you'll be pulling her and uh, the various compositions and in-depth mechanics surrounding the unit. So the first video is going to be the unit overview. So I'll explain the, uh, the skills. Uh, um, Ilya has and why she is uh, hyped as a meta defining unit. So I'm back on my CN account and I haven't played this account for a very long time as you can see if I were to I think collect some of the uh, stamina I would have yeah 10,000 stamina to collect. Um, so anyhow looking at Ilya I did pull her when she was released on um, the CN server right away and um, if we take a look at her skills so her first skill um, is it does uh, well, it does um, medium uh, damage, magic damage to um, the enemy, as well as boosting um, your own magical attack. However, um, this will uh, also do some damage to your own uh, Ilya. So the theme around Ilya actually is she's a uh, or vampire unit. Um, so she's actually going to lifesteal a lot, but also part of her kit is she's going to um, cause a lot of damage to herself and through that she gains a lot of TP and uh, this is why she is great as a unit because um, she gains TP really fast and then she has a huge burst um, magical damage uh, kit uh, that just makes her really good as a unit all around. So again, the first skill is um, uh, increase her own magic attack, um, does damage to herself, and um, deals uh, medium uh, magic damage to the enemy single target. Her second skill is again, she does damage to herself and uh, does AoE damage to the enemy units. And I think it's 600 radius. Um, so you can see how the two skills complement each other if you look at the rotation. Her entry uh, skill usage is she uses skill 1 first, so she'll be self buffing um, and uh, of course doing damage to herself and doing damage to the single target enemy. And then using that AoE skill to, um, to hit the opponent. Um, her X skill again is fairly simple, uh, increase her own magic attack and her union burst is uh, AoE magic damage and also does um, uh, it heals herself. So I'll just um, go to a story stage to show you how the uh, unit functions. And uh, let's just go with this comp and I don't know what's going on with this CN uh, client. Uh, for some reason it just uh, stops with a blank screen for me and then enters the stage around 5 or 10 seconds later. So while this is loading, um, I'll go over some of here, uh, some of the skill loops after. So the entry is 1 and then 2 uh, and then after that is auto attack 2, 1, auto attack 2, 1, auto attack, auto attack 2, 1. And, um, for her skill, um, all of her skill actually cause some harm to herself, whether it be skill 1, which is direct damage to herself, or skill 2, um, which is again is direct damage to herself, but her UB actually in arena um, is also in some form of a uh, self-harm um, skill because there is a second after the UB comes out that the position of Ilya is actually the frontmost unit and then for example if the enemy cavalry were to UB and it would hit the closest unit it actually would just one shot Ilya. Um, so this is why um, if you look at Ilya's kit all of her skill harm her in some form. However, there are ways around it that you can build comps to mitigate some of the risk and this is also one of the biggest reasons why um, people say you want to 5 star Ilya uh, at the very least 4 star for sure um, because the tankier you are, the obviously, uh, sorry, the more star you have the tankier you are, the less likely you are to die um, from your own skills because very important uh, thing to notice is that um, uh, Ilya's self-harm skill can also self-crit um, so you can often use skill 1, skill 2, and then you crit yourself, and that's not good. So let's just turn everything off. Um, so you can see this is already skill 2, 
um, and she already has her UB up because this comp is um, uh, focuses on TP charging Ilya. So you didn't see the skill one, skill two. Sorry, I was talking, but. Um, Let's just go back and uh, we'll wait for the loop to happen again. So this is skill 2 and you see that um, she did damage to herself as well as the AoE enemy. Um, and then this is skill 1. So again, you saw she did a attack buff on herself, magic attack buff, and then a uh, single target magic damage on the enemy unit. And this is her union burst. Um, so it's really good damage and she heals pretty much to full. Um, so with how Ilya functions, you will have her hit around half HP or 20% and everyone else will be trying, trying to TP boost Ilya and then she gets the UBL and she's back to full and rinse and repeat. And that's why she's such a devastating unit. Um, and uh, one of the units you see um, with Ilya a lot is Saren, uh, because Saren's position is 420 or 430, and Ilya's 425. So sh she's always going to uh, TP charge um, Ilya for that um, uh, huge or quick um, UB, uh, UB timing. So that is the skill in a nutshell. Uh, it's fairly simple. She does some self-harm to herself and does a hell of a lot of magic damage. And uh, this is where the star, four star, five star recommendation for Ilya comes from. And uh, the reason why Ilya is a such a meta-defining unit is because uh, if we look at it right now, um, Ilya, well, the, uh, the arena meta right now is uh, Tamaki variation. So we have some Tamaki variation, some Mage plus Ninon variations, and a lot of these teams just gets destroyed by Ilya variations. Um, Ilya, when it comes out, the arena teams are just going to be built around Ilya. So there are uh, variations of Ilya that I'll talk about in my third video um, that you can run, but um, there's like the double charge Ilya, single charge Ilya, um, Suicide Ilya and uh, all these variations will beat 90 to 95 percent of the arena defense teams. So this offers um, great offensive uh, offensive versatility for Ilya because then if you see a team that uh, one of your Ilya variations doesn't beat, you just simply just switch to uh, another one and you can counter that. Um, and this what makes the um, I would say the arena a lot more fun because um, as a free to play player. And if you have Ilya and all her enablers, uh, then if you haven't received the rank 1 reward for Arena or P Arena, you can essentially get it after Ilya's release. And its impact on defense teams is quite huge as well, because Tamaki stall is essentially gone, because Ilya will just murder that team. And then so you're forced to run teams that uh, fare a bit better against Ilya, but then once you run these counter Ilya teams, uh, first of all, Ilya can still counter these counter Ilya teams, and second of all, then these counter Ilya teams will lose to a lot of the other teams that people don't run uh, during the Tamaki Storm meta. So she's definitely a, a meta defining in the sense that Arena will look completely different after. And uh, also one thing, um, her implications for Princess Arena is quite big because out of the three teams, um, you essentially just have to beat one because the two remaining teams that uh, are left in Princess Arena, one of them will 100% lose to Ilya, no matter what, right? So you, you sometimes just go into Princess Arena, you find a team that, um, one of the three teams that you can beat, and they just run an Ilya comp against the other, one of the other remaining two, uh, and then you win the two out of three. So um, she has uh, uh, a huge uh, meta-defining um, impact on Princess Arena and Battle Arena. So what are her other uses? So if she was just a clan, or sorry, if she was just a um, PvP unit, then she wouldn't be as good, I feel. But however, um, she's actually one of the core units for mages in clan battle. So she is fairly um, position-wise, she is quite uh, forward in the sense that uh, if you run the mages, um, so for example, actually right now we don't have Summer Kiaru, but if we were to run mages um, in the global server for the next clan battle, it would look like, let's see, uh, normal Kiaru, um, where is Kyoka, and then let's just throw a uh, Misato as healer, plus one more magic DPS, um, Kyoka, Iria, Normal Karu, Misato, oh, can't remember, yes, Akari. So, 
uh, this, will, this is probably what the Mage 3rd team will look like next clan battle. And you can see that Ilya is at the front, right? So she'll be tanking a lot of hits, but she can survive um, because obviously Misato is there. But also because of her Union Burst, she's able to just heal to full before she dies. Um, and of course, having her at 5 star definitely helps. And 4 star, she's more likely to um, to die during the uh, the clan battles. But um, she has implications there. And later on with the release of Kyaru, um, she's only going to be better and uh, eventually I think the physical team the third physical team uh, will be replaced by mages um, but one thing to note though is if you have Kyoka um, you're 100% going to roll on as Kyaru because she's limited right and um, you can just borrow the Ilya for team 3 so you don't have to technically roll for her uh, but again this is another topic which I'll talk about in the second video for the Ilya series is the pros and cons of pulling an Ilya and then you can make your decisions there uh, but um, right now I just want to talk about her usage in clan battle and uh, she's definitely going to be a, a good unit there as well and uh, later on when we get a game mode called Lunar Tower uh, the Luna Tower, you will be using Ilya as well. She's actually um, quite good. Um, a lot of the uh, the team compositions require Ilya for an easy auto clear, um, so it wouldn't be a bad investment in that sense. For story wise, she's not that great uh, because of her self damaging abilities. Um, she's not going to um, sustain as well as you want. Um, however, you can still run a lot of supports for Ilya. Um, I clear dungeons um, using Ilya as part of the third team for cleanup crew as well um, so she'll still see some use but again obviously not as top tier as some of the other units um, so before I finish this video I just want to um, go over some of the other important informations um, but everything else for example the the pros and cons and um, me helping you guys through the decision process of pulling either or not will be the next video and then I'll run in-depth team analysis for Ilya uh, for my third video and then of course the Ilya counters for my fourth video but a uh, few more things I want to talk about in the rest of this video is her longevity. So after Ilya, we get Zumugi, and Zumugi actually is a um, somewhat of a counter to Ilya. However, Zumugi is a two star, and for her to be extremely busted in PvP, she has to be five star. So five starring a two star unit for PvP only is uh, a choice I would not recommend for the majority of the players. Um, so I wouldn't expect everyone to have that option. So Ilya is still going to dominate. And I believe after is Summer Pico. So Summer Pico turns Ilya's win rate from a 90 to 95% down to about 70 to 75. Uh, as Pico is a limited unit. Uh, however, I think most people at that time may be saving um, gems for uh, some Akaru because she's two banners after that um, and even again with S Pico um, you would not uh, see uh, you, Ilya will not disappear so for example if you take a look I actually did pull S Pico and uh, for S Pico um, I don't think I even yeah so I, I didn't use S Pico after because there was just a Shinobi later on that was much much better in um, PvP. Um, so S Pico basically you're just pulling for a short term use, um, a very gimmicky clan battle use later on uh, for maybe one I believe clan battle and also most importantly the wallpaper right. Um, but again Ilya's longevity will last until uh, H Shinobu. And H Shinobu is a limited uh, PvE, a uh, PvP, sorry, uh, meta-defining unit again. But even with H Shinobu, um, you're still able to counter some of the H Shinobu defense teams. Um, the only downside is obviously for the CN server, we got Kana, uh, which just obliterated Ilya completely uh, because you can pair her with H Shinobu and just nothing will live um, in the mid position. So. Ilya longevity wise, um, looking at the global schedule, it's definitely good. And I already talked about having Ilya at 5 star is best. You can however keep her at 4 star um, and just run her 4 star for PvP and clan battle until you realize that um, you know 4 star is too risky and I want to 5 star her. But since you can't 5 star down, you can run the 4 star version first and see how you feel about um, her squishiness. And again, Ilya requires a lot of enablers, so units like uh, Yukari, uh, Makoto, um, sorry not Makoto, uh, Monika, um, 
uh, Maho, uh, um, Saren, um, Rima, all of these pieces enable Ilya variations, which just makes her stronger because then you can counter a lot of the uh, anti Ilya teams. Um, but I'll have another video on that. And there are other in depth mechanics that um, you should definitely keep in mind. For example, um, if you have Kyoka and then you have Ilya as well, your teams are going to be stronger in the sense that if you were face a Tamaki team that is um, designed to specifically counter your Ilya, you can actually put your Kyoka in and then the Tamaki will be targeting the Kyoka and uh, essentially sacrificing that Kyoka to make sure Ilya doesn't die to the burst. Um, but again, that's going to be a different video. So hopefully this video helped you understand what her kit looks like. And again, her skills are designated around heavy magical output um, in terms of damage and her speed is insane with all the TB charge enablers um, and she can live steal all the, um, the damage she took from her own skill. Um, so yeah, as a meta defining unit, I definitely will be pulling for her. But uh, my next video will talk about if uh, you should pull for her uh, depending on your situation.